In the vast expanse of human imagination, few images evoke as much intrigue and wonder as planet-sized cities. These mammoth urban landscapes that stretch across entire worlds represent the pinnacle of human ambition and ingenuity. They challenge our perceptions of what might be possible. But more than just being visual entertainment, they serve as an opportunity for exploration of our relationships with nature. The world of Isaac Asimov's foundation is vast, futuristic, yet strangely human and relatable. Its main theme is human society, how it's fundamentally flawed and poised to ultimately cause its own demise. At the heart of the story sits the Jewel, the home of the Galactic Empire, a planet-sized city of Trantor. In 1679, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek, a scientist and inventor of the microscope, predicted that Earth could support 13.4 billion people. Most experts today think that Earth can support about 10 billion people, and that when our population reaches that number, it will start to decline. There are nearly 8 billion people living on Earth today, and the number is definitely still growing. Trentor is home to 40 billion people, and it's often also used as an illustration of what could eventually happen to any urbanized planet. Isaac Asimov wrote Foundation in 1942 as a series of short stories that were later compiled into a novel published in 1951. Later it became one of Asimov's most famous work and a cornerstone of science fiction literature. It directly inspired stories such as Star Wars and Dune. The premise of Asimov's books is that the future days of the Galactic Empire are numbered. Edward Gibbon in his work, The History and the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, explores the various factors that led to the collapse of one of the greatest civilizations in our history. Just like Asimov, Gibbon attributes Rome's demise to internal decay, moral decline and a failure in leadership. George Santayana once wrote, those who cannot remember their past are condemned to repeat it, essentially emphasizing the cyclical nature of history and the propensity for humans to make the same mistakes over and over again, leading to their eventual downfall. But this sort of downfall is often preceded by massive growth. The growth that may still lie ahead of us is something that we have to prepare for today. Since the dawn of civilization, humans have maintained a deep and symbiotic connection with the natural world. Our ancient ancestors revered the land. It was the source of sustenance, shelter and spiritual significance. From the hunter-gatherer societies of prehistory to the agrarian civilizations of antiquity, humanity's existence was intimately intertwined with the rhythms of nature. As civilizations evolved and urbanizations began to reshape landscapes, this connection underwent profound transformations. Cities emerged as centers of innovation, culture and commerce, but they also introduced new challenges. The rapid expansion of urban areas often came at the expense of green spaces, biodiversity and ecological balance. In modern times, as urbanization accelerates, the distance between humanity and nature seems to widen. High-rise buildings replace ancient forests, concrete jungles encroach upon natural habitats, the frenetic pace of city life leaves little time for contemplation of the natural world. Yet despite this growing separation, the yearning for a connection to nature still remains deeply ingrained within all of us. Planet-sized cities serve as metaphors for ever-expanding urban landscapes and the profound impact of urbanization on the natural world. They force us to confront the consequences of relentless growth and the sacrifices that we make in the name of progress. Sacrifices that not only affect us, the individuals, our societies, but also nature itself. In the Star Wars universe, there are three perfect examples that highlight the price of unrelenting progress. Coruscant is often referred to as the heart of the galaxy. It has been the political center for millennia, serving as the capital of various galactic governments, including the Galactic Republic and the Galactic Empire. Its surface is entirely covered by vast cityscapes with towering skyscrapers and layers upon layers of urban development. Corcusant is also the home of the, the symbol of all that is good, the Jedi Temple, the Senate and the 
countless species and cultures. Coruscant symbolizes the pinnacle of galactic civilization and the centralization of power. Essentially, it is the Star Wars version of the Star Trek's Federation. Technologically, with its towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, Coruscant represents the height of technological and urban development. New York City is a bustling metropolis, known for its towering skyscrapers, diverse population and status of a global economic and cultural hub. Both cities serve as centers of power and influence within their respective universes, New York City being a major financial, political and cultural center in the real world. Additionally, both cities exhibit stark contrast between wealth and poverty. Narshada, also known as the Smuggler's Moon, is a notorious haven for criminals, smugglers and other fringe elements. This city is a maze of neon-lit streets, towering skyscrapers and seedy establishments catering to every vice imaginable. Narshada represents the seedy underbelly of the Star Wars universe, where lawlessness and corruption reign supreme. Bangkok, like Narshada, has a reputation for being a melting pot of cultures and a center for illicit activities, the overcrowded neon-lit haven for lawlessness. The third planet-sized city is Zyost. This once thriving Sith world served as the capital of the ancient Sith Empire. And just like Zyost, Rome was adorned with grand temples and monuments dedicated to its rulers and gods, serving as a symbol of authority and conquest. Cities like Trantor and Coruscant stand as monuments to human ambition and ingenuity, the triumph over the natural world. But they also serve as cautionary tales, reminders of the consequences of relentless urbanization. Trentor is perhaps the best example of a city without nature. Trentor represents the ultimate expression of urbanization taken to the extremes. But even amidst the concrete and steel of Trentor or Coruscant, there are glimpses of nature's resilience. In foundation, remnants of Trentor's once vibrant ecosystems can be seen in the form of underground parks and artificial forests, serving as a reminder of what has been lost. Similarly, in Star Wars, pockets of greenery and wildlife can be found amidst the urban sprawls of Coruscant. Yet these glimpses of nature's resilience serve only to underscore the extent to which humanity has reshaped the landscape in its own image, leaving very little room for anything else. In architecture, the symbiotic relationship between humanity and nature has been a driving force behind innovation and design for centuries. Ancient civilizations always built their structures in harmony with the natural landscape. And though we have witnessed a post-war era with the explosion of concrete jungles in the form of skyscrapers in the US or entire cities of concrete blocks in Eastern Europe, modern day architects often seek to to integrate nature back into urban fabric and the influence of the natural world on architecture is simply undeniable. In the last video about the Fallout universe, I mentioned the biophilic design. By the way, if you haven't seen that video, watch it up here. Coined by American biologist Edward Wilson, biophilic design seeks to harness humanity's innate connection to nature by incorporating elements of the natural world into the built environment. This approach goes beyond the aesthetics. It's mostly about tangible benefits that nature can have on human health, well-being and productivity. Architects like Frank Lloyd Wright and Louis Kahn were early pioneers of biophilic design, creating spaces that blur the boundaries between indoors and outdoors. Wright's falling water house in Pennsylvania seamlessly integrates natural materials, light and water, creating a sense of harmony with the surroundings. Similarly, Kahn's Salk Institute in California features open courtyards and expansive views of the Pacific Ocean. Standing there, you get a deep sense of connection with nature. Today, initiatives like the High Line in New York City, for instance, serve as powerful examples of the transformative power of nature in the urban environment. 
This elevated linear park was built on a disused railway track and has become a symbol of urban renewal and greenery space innovation. High Line shows how nature can be integrated back into dense urban areas to create vibrant public spaces that foster a sense of connection with the natural world. Whenever I look at cities like Tokyo with its metropolitan population of 37 million or Mexico City with 22 and a half million people, you inadvertently start to feel like we're definitely on the way of creating monstrosities like Trantor and finding a harmonious balance between human progress and the preservation of the natural world suddenly feels more urgent than ever before. Looking at the expanses of light spanning over the horizon, you'll realize that adopting strategies that prioritize sustainability, resilience and ecological stewardship is even more essential. Projects like the Bosco Verticale in Milan offer perfect examples of how green spaces can be integrated into dense urban environments to transform the cityscapes and improve the quality of life for its inhabitants. These green towers provide a habitat for wildlife and help mitigate air pollution. But they also serve as, as oases of tranquility and beauty amidst this urban jungle. Ken Yang bioclimatic skyscrapers, for instance, utilize passive design strategies such as natural ventilation, daylighting and green roofs to minimize energy consumption and reduce environmental impact. Humans are part of nature and will never be separate from it. Though cities are often seen as standing apart from the natural world, in this ever-evolving story of humanity and nature, architecture will continue to shape the landscapes of our cities and the narrative of our lives. As the population grows, urbanization will continue to develop, maybe one day even reaching the levels of Trantor or Coruscant. But unlike the planet-sized cities of our imagination, it's very unlikely that humans would ever completely diverge from our connection with nature. In Singapore, 2 million trees have been planted in the last 45 years. Nowadays, Singapore is richer in species than any other city in the world. And this practice extends to all parts of the city. In the gardens by the bay, 150 feet high metal trees are full of life. This is a new urban world that we have designed and built with others in mind. If we ever expand enough to cover the entire planet, it won't be a metal jungle. The cities of the future will most likely see wildlife thriving alongside humans across the entire planet. After all, we are the architects of the urban world as much as we are the architects of the future.